Um, so, uh, so you just raised a new fund, and right. your first one was in 2004. Um, how how has your thinking changed uh, over that period, and like sort of the nature of the startups you look at, you right. would sort of pick now versus then? So it changed a lot. We, when in 2004 was said web applications, and we had kind of a broad uh, view of what that meant. Um, we did advertising stuff like Dakota. We did, you know, sort of enterprise-focused web apps. We did consumer-focused web apps. Probably about 18 months ago, my partner Brad um, sat down and said, you know, I think we need to be more narrow in terms of what we're investing in. And we started talking about it. And we ended up saying we want to invest in large networks of engaged users. That's what we want to invest in. So that could be enterprise, um, but it's hard to find those in enterprise. But it's definitely in consumer. Um, and the engaged user is really a big part of that. Just not, not a large network, but it has to be a large network of engaged users. So for example, something like Pandora, I don't think would fit that requirement because those users aren't really engaged. You're just sitting back listening, right? There's no, the users aren't doing anything yeah. in Pandora. So we probably wouldn't invest in Pandora, even though Pandora is a great company. Is Groupon engaged? Uh, Groupon to me is an ad network. We wouldn't invest in that. I see. Um, so we would have back in the original version of what we wanted to invest in in 2004. But today, we don't see Groupon as a large network of engaged users. So, so we don't. We don't so clearly, I mean, Groupon's doing well. You, do you think it's just not ultimately defensible if they're not no, engaged? You pick, no, you have to pick what you want to invest in. I see. I'm so not saying that the people who invested in Groupon. Well, no, obviously they did well. I mean, but, but like. But, no, but I just, we, we want to have a very narrow filter because um, we feel like we want to be deep domain experts in something, and for somebody who's building a large network of engaged users, we want them to come to us. Okay. And if it's an ad network, they should go to somebody else, and if it's an e-commerce thing. Now, within e-commerce, we think marketplaces are really interesting. Those, in our mind, are, are large networks of engaged users, but something like diapers.com or Zappos aren't, in our minds. I see. Interesting. Um, there does seem to be like a resurgence of marketplaces. I think these yeah. days, like Airbnb, Re like you're starting to see things that were always dreamed about, like Airbnb and these other things yeah. happening. Airbnb is a company that we saw very early on. That you know that question you asked me before, um, what did we not invest in that we sh wanted to invest in, <coughs> or that maybe we should have invested in Airbnb and also Bump. Um, yeah. Bump's another company that we wanted to invest in. We got beat by Sequoia and. Um, and we lost the deal, and you know I've regretted that. I really like that yeah. company. I like the founders. I like the product. So uh, VCs always talk about how they add value. Right. Um, sometimes entrepreneurs are cynical about that and say they just provide capital. Right. Um, do you, you know how do you provide value beyond capital? I think first of all that there's a good chance that maybe all we're ever going to do with a company is provide capital, and. We're okay with that. If the company wants us to be just the capital provider and, and leave them alone, you know, that's okay. And we actually have a few companies in our portfolio that treat us that way, and a number of them are some of the best companies in our portfolio. So and we, don't have, we don't have this thing like if we're not adding value, you know, we're unhappy with it or whatever. So I just want to say that right up front. If, if that's all that the entrepreneur wants from us, we can play that game. But when the entrepreneur wants something more, um, we're happy to do it, and I think we, we provide value in product areas, we provide uh, value in business model areas, we provide value in thinking about the right people to have on the team as the team grows and when's the right time to bring on a VP of engineering or a VP of product. How do the founder relates to that and how to keep the founder engaged in the company and also at the same time build a management team. These are things that we've seen a lot of over the years and I think we can provide value. Um, but I also recognize that the founder's relationship with the investor is a loaded relationship and that the investor can be too meddling and the founder wants to feel like yeah. they're in control or the CEO wants to feel like they're in control. And one of the things that I've learned, uh, having done this for 25 years, is how to be balanced in that way. If, the, if I'm picking up a vibe that you know, we're too intrusive, yeah. we pull back. I was uh, talking to David Karp, and he was saying that uh, from Tumblr, and he was he was he was uh, saying how you and um, Bijan were incredibly patient, and in fact encouraged him to be more patient than he was going to be. Um, I think that's something that people don't maybe think enough about when they raise money is sort of how patient is their capital, and right. like what are are there 
are there um, kind of timeline expectations well, aligned with reality and the companies and you know we were highly confident that if Tumblr could build a large network of engaged users which they now have um, that they would be able to figure out how to make money and David you know maybe even too much um, was running it very very lean and so the company wasn't burning through very much money and so from our perspective was like let's not worry about all that stuff just keep building the users and get it um, to the place where it can be really really large and then you know we'll figure out with how to how to make the money there they ran into the scaling problem we've seen this with Twitter we've seen it with um, other companies that you know you don't need much money to get going but there comes a time when all of a sudden the thing just <laughs> scales and a lot of times the company hasn't put enough investment into the infrastructure and they get caught a little bit and um, and that's where it's important to have a lot of capital because at that point you have no choice you gotta buy servers you gotta buy bandwidth yeah. you gotta hire engineers you gotta get a VP of engineering you gotta get a VP of tech ops and you just gotta do it and um, and so that's when the big money comes not mm -hmm. actually in the early days yeah 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 I think Tumblr is a company that might not have survived with different VCs frankly because they might have, have pushed David to do other things. Yeah, this like, isn't you know, working. Yeah, and like you need to make more money sooner. Right. You know, freemium, all this other stuff. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, and it turns. It looks like. I mean, I think like the the risk. Of, I think you've said this many times. Like, the risk of monetiz monetization is relatively low when you have a huge like large yeah, scale. But the, right, network. but the risk of monetization is very high if you do it at the wrong time yeah. and you do it in the wrong way because you could just ruin your business yeah, by yeah. just over monetizing it too early. Um, I think that venture capitalists can hurt companies um, probably more than they can help companies, right? So just being a capital provider and, and not doing anything else is fine, right? Because the worst thing is when the VCs start getting their hooks into the company. There was, and a, there was a Harvard Business School study that found that there was a, the farther away a portfolio company was from the VC, the better the returns. And they had like 50 theories as to why, and none of the theories were maybe because VCs actually meddle too much, you know, which is sort of right. one obvious well, way. Twi to, Twitter, and Zinger in, Twitter, Twitter and Zinger in San Francisco, we provided the first round capital in both of those companies. We're in New York. What that means is that those entrepreneurs got to build their company for a year without anybody messing with them, yeah. right? So <laughs> we can, there's some <laughs> yeah, proof there. That's funny. <laughs>